So <clears throat> in previous videos, we've taken a look at a number of these sculpt tools. However, we haven't talked about all of them yet. I've held off on talking about some of these tools uh, because I wanted to uh, talk about stencils first. It'll be easier to uh, discuss some of these other tools after I've demonstrated stencils. Stencils are different than stamps, which we looked at in the previous video. Uh, and to illustrate that, uh, let's, let's give it a try. Now remember, W key will show you the wireframe of your mesh. You can increase the resolution of your mesh by going to Mesh Add New Subdivision Level, or you can use the hotkey combination of Shift D, which I'm going to do now. And I will add a couple uh, new levels to it. I'm going to bring it to level six so that we have one, about one and a half million polygons. This will give me enough resolution to get to uh, have some nice smooth uh, sculpting. I'll press W on my keyboard to hide the wireframe. And always, always, always remember to use layers. So I'm going to create a layer now that I'll be working on. I have my sculpt tool selected. We've gone over the sculpt tool before. You know that you can simply brush strokes on it and you'll get an effect like this. We've also looked at how you can use stencils with, uh, sorry, how you can use stamps with this tool and get an effect like that or how we can increase the stamp spacing and get an effect like that. Uh, but today, what we're going to do is look at stencils. So I'm going to turn off these stamps and we'll take a look at these stencils here. So I'm gonna to go to the stencil tab. I still have my sculpt tool activated and we'll just pick one of these stencils and we'll try this one here. So this is a stencil. This is a stencil that we're looking at now. And what we can do is we can sculpt through this stencil. And as you can see, that gives us this nice effect here. Now, if I zoom in and I do, do it, I'll get a finer, uh, you know, finer result there if I zoom out. That's one effective way of using uh, the stencils is how close or how far away your mesh is from the stencil. Uh, but you'll also notice that you have these hotkey combinations where you can move the stencil as well as scale the stencil. Uh, I have had a little bit of trouble today rotating the stencil. In fact, my computer has crashed a number of times when I've tried to rotate it, so I'm not going to try to rotate the stencil right now. If you don't want to use the stencil and you want to hide it, you can use the hotkey Q. Q will work as a toggle, turning on and off the stencil. In addition, you can also turn off the stencil here. I recommend to get accustomed to using stencils that you actually spend a little bit of time exploring all these different stencils that you have available to you. Uh, I'm going to hide this layer and create a new layer and we'll take a look at another stencil that I particularly like, which is this one here. This one is really great for creating mountains, for example. So I'm going to paint through this stencil. Maybe I'll make my brush a little bigger. All the different settings, whether it's the strength of your brush, the width of your brush, you can uh, use, including stamps. You can paint stamps through stencils. That's all still available to you. So I'm going to paint through my stencil. That should be good. Uh, I'll hide the stencil. I don't need it anymore. 
And let's take a look at what we have here. Very nice rough surface here. And now that we have this surface here to work with, this is a perfect opportunity to show you some more of the tools here in our sculpt tools area. And the one I would like to show you first is this one, the amplify tool. If we put our mouse on it, we'll see exactly what it does. The, ampl the amplify tool accentuates surface detail by raising high areas and lowering low areas as you stroke. So in other words, by using the ampl amplify um, tool here, it will, it will amplify whatever we have going on here on our surface. It'll take the higher areas and make them even higher. It'll take the lower areas and push them down even further. So let's give that a try, and I'll, I'll try the amplify tool right here in this area. Make sure to select it and brush on this kind of middle area here. And then if we take a look, you'll see that it kept the original sculpting there that we did using our stencil. However, it made the high areas come up more, and it made the low areas get pushed down even further. That is the Amplify tool. Uh, now, this is a perfect opportunity to look a little bit more at the Smooth and Relax tools. So if I put my mouse on the smooth tool, it says that the smooth tool smooths out surface detail by averaging the mesh points under your brush stroke. And here, we'll try that out. Maybe I'll make my brush a little smaller. And you can see that I can just smooth out the result there by using this smooth tool. problem is, I was confused for a moment why it didn't seem to do what I thought it would do, and that's because I'm still using the Amplify tool. So <laughs> let's go back over here to the, the Smooth tool. I'll select it, and let's see if we get... There we go. Now we're getting the behavior that we expect. You can see how it's smoothing out the sculpting. Uh, in the areas that I'm utilizing this smooth tool. The relax tool is very similar uh, with a slight difference. You'll see that the relax tool is intended for smoothing the surface but without affecting the shape. You'll have to play around with these two tools to really see uh, how they differ from one another. One another. I think that you'll find that in most cases, the smooth tool will probably do the job that you desire. The next tool I would like to take a look at will be the pinch tool, which is found here. But to illustrate the pinch tool, I'm first going to use the knife tool. And we'll come over here and make this cut in our mesh. I'm going to press W on my keyboard so that you can actually see the uh, faces so that you see exactly what the pinch tool is going to do. So I'll select the pinch tool. Maybe I'll make the brush a little smaller. And I'm just going to use it in this area of this crease that I created with the knife tool. And what you'll notice is that it does just as the name suggests. It actually pinches the geometry together. Uh, and in the case of this knife tool effect that I created, uh, it actually makes it a little bit uh, of a sharper cut. So that can be quite useful. That is the pinch tool. I'll press W on the keyboard to hide the wireframe, and what I'm going to do now is I'll show you a couple more tools. The uh, tools that we're going to take a look at are going to be the Flatten tool, the Scrape tool, and the Fill tool. Uh, but to illustrate those, I'm going to once again return to my Sculpt tool, and I'm going to use 
that same stencil I used earlier. Uh, however, I will uh, increase my brush and maybe I'll bring up the strength of it a little bit. Do something like this. Okay, there we go. So the first one we'll take a look at will be the scrape tool. We'll take a look at that first. So here's the scrape tool. Put my mouse on it. What does it do? It reduces the high areas of the surface while leaving the lower areas untouched, which is why I wanted to use this example because we've got some nice high and low areas here. So if I select the scrape tool, take a look at these kind of peak areas here that I have sculpted. And if I brush on them, you'll see it flattens them out while not touching the low areas. This can be quite effective. It creates a very nice contrast, in my opinion, where I have some of these areas that are much uh, flatter, smoother, uh, contrasting with these areas that are gouged into the surface that are deeper. Uh, so I think that can be quite effective. Uh, a tool that does pretty much the exact opposite would be the fill tool here. And if I put my mouse over that, it explains that the fill tool fills in the val valleys on the surface while leaving the high areas untouched. So in fact, it does the exact opposite of the scrape tool. Uh, we'll activate that tool and try that one out. So remember, this one is going to fill in the valleys. And if I brush in there, you can see that that's exactly what it does. It doesn't affect these really high areas here. A uh, very similar tool to the scrape tool. It just pretty much does the exact opposite, but also very, very nice effect where we get that nice contrast between these smoother areas and these rough areas here. And finally, the flatten tool found here. The flatten tool flattens the surface by moving the vertices under your brush, uh, under your brush stroke towards a common plane. Very similar to perhaps the fill and the scrape tool. Uh, I'll go ahead and activate it. It's not specifically looking at low or high areas on, uh, on your mesh. That's how it's different than those two other tools. Uh, but you can see that what it'll do is it just flattens those areas out. So in this video and previous videos, we've covered most of these tools here in the Sculpt Tools. The only ones that we haven't really touched upon yet are these Remesh uh, Reduce Refine tools, uh, which I might cover in a later video. Uh, but in the next video, we'll take a look at the Freeze tool and the Mask tool. Hope this video has been useful for you, and thanks for watching.